A little bit about me. I have been with the district for quite a few years now, but I took off to China for a couple of years. And when I came back in 2011, I started with Coquitlam Open Learning. Coquitlam Open Learning has a smaller sub-school in it that started last year. Uh, Stephen Whiffen was the one who sort of proposed the idea for the Inquiry Hub. And he went to our superintendent, Tom Grant, and pitched the idea, which fit really well with the whole um, district vision of learning without boundaries. And it just happened to coincide with the BC Ed Plan, which is uh, personalized learning. So it's an, it was a nice fit uh, and a perfect timing for us to ask before all the budget things happened. So <laughs> not sure it would have got off the ground this year. Um, but uh, just to give you a little background of what happens there, we break the day up a little differently than a, a traditional high school. And students are taking online courses, but they start their day with topical workshops that are directed by teachers. And what the teachers try to do is they try to ignite an interest uh, and use group work and participation and discussions and take pieces of the curriculum that online it's hard to engage, but face to face they can really uh, bring the curriculum alive. And they try to take away things online that would not necessarily um, be as easy to do online and interact with the students there. We also have the resource of being part of Coquitlam Open Learning and having a multitude of classes and options that are provided as a result of that. We try to be extremely flexible in the way that we assess learning. Uh, students create videos, they create blog pages, do a lot of presentations. Uh, we use rubrics quite a bit. We still do some traditional testing, but for the most part what we're doing is we're uh, giving students a lot of freedom to express th their learning in a way that they want to, to learn. And it's a small school with uh, um, a learning commons environment and we have a, quite a few learning spaces. We have a, a computer lab that we use sort of uh, as the quieter space. We have a more coffee shop style open area. Uh, right now we are in the process of taking what was our sort of science lab uh, and making it into a maker space where uh, things are being constructed and built all the time. And one of the most important things is that there is a uh, dedicated inquiry time provided every single day. And for us, that's a really important thing. A lot of times when people are paying attention to uh, inquiry, it's sort of uh, something that's done on the side. And for us, it's a dedicated part of their day that they're investigating uh, inquiries of their own choice. Just a few quick examples. Um, Jay has decided to build a scale model of our school in Google SketchUp. And so he's figuring out all the, the proportions himself and, and building that. Uh, I'll talk about our green inquiry team uh, in a little bit, but they are uh, actually building an indoor greenhouse. And uh, Chloe and Joey, uh, that's the uh, photos at the start when they're starting to take apart a lawnmower engine and they hope to make it more efficient. Right now it's in pieces and we'll see where things go with that. At the Inquiry Hub, we have a few aspects that we try to pay attention to. The first one is that there's dedicated inquiry time. We want student voice, and I think of that also as student choice in the sense of what they learn, sometimes when they learn it, and um, how they're assessed. We want them to have a legitimate audience that makes the learning authentic. We are trying to focus more and more on community building and extending the community beyond the walls of the school. We want them to be great leaders that have autonomy over some of the decisions that are made in the school. We want them to enjoy learning and, and think of play and, and learning as something that they actually enjoy. And we live in this incredibly networked world and we want them to understand how to tap into those networks and to look, take the learning beyond the, the walls of the school. So for, for us, uh, inquiry learning is active learning. It's about um, taking questions that are student driven. It's providing them with an opportunity to, to do that, but then also making sure that we're there to offer support and to facilitate where we can. And the thing about uh, in inquiry as a way of learning is you have to ask good questions if you're looking for good answers. 
And so that's a big piece of what we do is we spend time making sure that we're asking good questions, which you'll notice is a theme of this presentation. Uh, for in that sense, though, one of the things is it's not just about asking a great question. It's about the action and the doing that's important. It's about the purpose of, of those questions that really is important as well. And so that's something that um, we are always trying to focus on. Just to give you an idea of some of the things students are doing, this was probably our, our biggest success story. Um, I should have come here with the biggest failure story too, but we'll work on this for now. Um, but uh, we had a student, uh, Shauna, in the center of the picture of uh, the Tri-City News, and she at the beginning of the year wrote a grant for $5,000 from the World Wildlife Fund and got it for uh, developing a community garden. What they then did was they um, started studying and doing some science research to figure out what the best growing conditions are um, with uh, light water and also kinds of soil. Uh, and then in the spring, they organized a community um, garden build. They decided on the timing of it to be from 11 a.m. till 7 p.m. So parents and community members who work can come and assist with it after school. They purchased the wood, the, the soil, the, um, all the plants, and made all the choices about the garden. Uh, my personal role was uh, just a couple things. One was about, um, uh, basically I did the barbecue and took that off their hands. And the other one had to do with the fact that they wanted to extend the garden beyond the, the green space to make a statement about urban gardening, and they were told no by the district. And that's where we as facilitators said, well, why was the no? And, and had, them, had them go back and propose a better design that would allow them to do what they wanted to accomplish. These are some of the other current things that are happening. Um, I gave you the example of designing uh, 3D models to scale. Uh, we have a, a student whose dad is in commercial glass. And when commercial glass is broken, it is not recycled. It goes straight to the garbage. And she thinks that's a, a waste, so she wants to figure out unique ways that you can use that glass and cr actually develop a, um, a, pro a recycling program for commercial glass. Uh, we have um, the, the garden crew are actually now constructing a, or want to construct an aquaponic and hydroponic gardens so that they can go indoors and do, do their gardening all year. Uh, I broke all kinds of rules about how much words you're supposed to put on a slide. And for that reason, what I would like to do now is I actually want to reduce this to what's important. And so what are our students doing? They're doing action verbs here, things that we want to see, the kinds of things that we want to hear about when we ask, what did you do at school today? So in this process, what will happen is students will fail and they will not ac always accomplish what we want them to do. And that is actually something that to us is a little bit of an indicator that, that we're, we're, we're doing okay. Because in reality, if you allow students to be absolutely successful in everything they try to do, you've probably put the bar too low. And so they actually aren't trying hard enough or us, we as a program are not providing enough challenge for them. And so what we need to do is we need to teach students to fail well. Um, a little acronym that I like is failure always invites learning. So the invitation is always there. We need students to put in the effort, but we also need educators, parents, and community members to make sure that the resources are in place, that there's support, that the students are constantly reflecting we as an entire community need to make sure that the lack of knowledge is something we're working on. Not handing over the knowledge, sometimes it has to come from the student. They have to bring it to that point where they're doing the work as well, but we have to, have to do that. When those conditions are there, then we can allow students to fail and have a high potential for learning. Right. Mr. Wiffen, Steve Wiffen, uh, he said that when a student leaves in grade 12, one of their departing portfolio pieces should be my epic failure. Because what that shows is, first of all, that they understand that no matter how hard you try, sometimes you don't succeed, but you can have an incredible amount of pride in the work that you do. And sometimes you can have all the conditions right 
to be a success. But when you're trying to do something that is audacious, challenging, and pushes the threshold of what we know, and we're looking at questions where we don't know all the answers to them, you can still fail. And for us to do that and actually have an opportunity to invite learning in those experiences is something that I think is very enriching, enriching and powerful. And so to teach is to model and demonstrate. To learn is to practice and reflect. Uh, Stephen Downs is an excellent, um, powerful mind of, uh, from, uh, he's a Canadian. Uh, and uh, he, he and one other person, um, what is his name? Out of, oh, I can't remember. Cormier? Not Cormier? Oh, I've forgotten now. Um, oh, it's going to bug me. Um, but they, they actually have, some people argue it isn't, but they have the newest learning theory, which is connectiv connectivism. And so they are, I think, premier thinkers of our time. And he says, uh, you know, we need to model and demonstrate. And so one of the things is uh, we are trying something new at the Inquiry Hub. No one's quite doing it the way we are. That doesn't mean we're doing it right, but we're trying to figure out and learn along the way and allow our students to see that we're struggling with how to make things work. And things are already different from last year, and we're trying to improve and constantly do that. And our students are seeing that we are doing that part of the process too. We want them to do practice and we want them to reflect. This is the model that we're using uh, for our inquiry, which is by the BC Teacher Librarian Association. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, the points of inquiry. We want students to connect and wonder, connect their, their thinking, and, and make connections outside of uh, specific areas of content. We want them to investigate and figure out how to do that really well. We want them to actually construct and, and create products and do things that that matter. We want them to express and share that with their community and the world and we want them to reflect. The thing about this model is it's wonderfully messy and I just went through these in a nice little circle as if to say that there's some sort of cycle but it's not because when they construct something and it doesn't work they immediately go and they reflect. When they do that they realize that maybe they need more investigation. That investigation leads them to connect to something else and wonder something else. And that is the process that is uh, ongoing for us. And so what we're doing is we're having them examine that whole process and work on it and, and really dig into it because we want them to learn about learning. And we think that that is really important. And so another quote by Stephen Downs, I think for a long time um, we thought of educating as what are the things that need to be learned? What is the content? What is the knowledge that needs to be learned? And now we're thinking more about what is it that we need st students to do? So, what did you learn at school today? If you're only asking these questions, what mark did you get on your test? How much homework do you have? How did your team do in today's game? Well, what you're telling your kids, this, what are you telling your kids that is important? That is the question. Right? And there's nothing wrong with any one of these questions. Not, nothing wrong. But if that's the only question that you're asking, then, you're, then you need to think about what you're telling your kids by the questions you're asking. Okay? I told you I'd get back to it. So what do you want your child to say when you ask those questions? What do you really want to know, and what else can you ask? I'll just give a few personal examples about, about that. So, if you value learning how to learn, a, a great question, and just one example, is what was your biggest challenge today? If you care about them being compassionate, who did you help today? If you want them to enjoy learning, what was your favorite part of the day? And I stumbled on the bottom two here uh, quite a few years ago with my own daughters when I just wanted my daughters to end their day thinking of something positive and I would ask them what their favorite part of the day was. Um, I care about them caring about others and so I would also ask them who you helped today. Uh, I started that about five or six years ago, I think about six or seven years ago and my daughter who is 11 now um, she will ask me one of these two questions if I don't get to it first every night before we go to bed. And sometimes the favorite part of the day 
is that moment right there because there wasn't really much for that day. And sometimes there's no one to say who you actually helped that day. But the fact that I'm continually asking those things absolutely shows her what I value. And when we go and have parent-teacher interviews and we hear about how helpful she is, we know that it's the questions that we are asking that help matter. I think she's like that anyway, and without this, she still has that in her. But I feel that the questions we ask can influence. And that is so true for educators as well. And the things we are asking them to do, whether we're asking them to memorize something or we're asking them to actually do something that matters, to have those actions and to do something, it really makes a difference. So what did you learn in school today? Um, what else can you ask? And what kind of answers do you really want? Thank you.